Hello, friends and nonprofit leaders. It's Laura Zelke here, your host of the Your Nonprofit Life podcast and videocast. Yeah, we're on YouTube now. Uh, we just had to keep up with the changing times, you know. Uh, it's actually been a while since we had our last podcast published, but I have a special, special treat for you today. If you listen to the whole episode or watch it, um, you're going to learn about the most creative and fun fundraising idea that I have heard of in a really long time. When my guest explained what it was like, I was like, here, sign me up, take my money. Like, it's that good. So I hope you stick around. My guest today is Leanne Porter, the founder and executive director of Loving Bottoms Diaper Bank in Galesburg, Illinois. Leanne started the organization in her home back in 2014, and now they operate out of a 5,000 square foot warehouse and serve residents of seven counties in central Illinois. In fact, they just hit 1 million diapers donated in March of 2021. That's a lot of diapers, if you ask me. Now, don't be fooled by the name. Even though Loving Bottoms is a diaper bank, a hub for diaper distribution, the organization also provides a variety of basic necessities such as period supplies, incontinence supplies, and wipes for those in need. Now, why is Leanne so passionate about diapers, you ask? Well, it goes back to a time when her world had turned upside down and Leanne found herself in a place that she really never thought she'd be making choices that she really never thought she'd have to make. So you're going to be inspired by Leanne's story. I guarantee it. It took a lot of grit and determination to rebuild her life and it wasn't long until she knew that she had to help others who faced similar challenges. And that's when the idea of a nonprofit burst in and said, start a diaper bank. Well, I can't wait for you to meet Leanne and hear how she's helping her community and really the surrounding communities by providing what they need, when they need it, and where they need it. Oh, and the fundraiser she shares. Let's all add it to our list of potential fundraisers. It's so easy and fun, and you could totally adapt it to virtual fundraising if you needed to, because COVID. So without any further ado, here's my interview with the lovely and tenacious Leanne Porter, founder and executive director of Loving Bottoms Diaper Bank. Hey, have you ever wished you could hear some good news for a change? Well, I might have just what you've been hoping for. Welcome to Your Nonprofit Life, where we remove our rose-colored glasses and explore what leaders are actually doing to move their nonprofits from messy to thriving without burning out in the process. I'm Laura Zelke, Director of Member Experience for the Nonprofit Leadership Lab. Join me each week to explore the ups, downs, and whoopsie daisies of your nonprofit life. Let's get started. Well, Leanne Porter, I am so excited that we finally have, like, the stars have aligned and we can finally record a podcast together. Thank you so much for joining me today. I am so excited to be here. Yes, the stars are aligned. The odds are in our favor today. Yes. Um, and, and I have to say, thank you for making time uh, for this interview right before a final exam. Um, how is it that, that you're able to do a podcast right before you take a final? Um, I'm crazy. No, <laughs> uh, it's not the word I should use, but um, I'm, I'm adventurous, I guess. Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, you're prepared. You've I'm been prepared. studying. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll call it prepared. Um, at this point, if I'm not ready, I'm... I'm not yeah, going to be more I feel ready, yeah. Um, yeah. than I would be. So yeah, I'm excited to get that done and and uh, move on with with the rest of the summer. Yeah, I bet. So what are you studying? Um, I am going back to school to uh, actually back to school. I went to school right after high school. I'm um, in my late forties. And uh, so I went to school right after high school, but then uh, pursued a career as a mom and uh, just have a, you know, a few classes that I took. Um, and so I've been doing this nonprofit thing for almost six years and thought maybe I'd, you know, do the grown up thing and 
uh, get a bachelor's degree. <laughs> um, not that I need one to do what I'm doing, but uh, I just want to enhance my skills and learn what I don't know. And, you know, always well, be learning. I, I think that is just um, inspirational. And I know that it encourages um, listeners, especially those who are, you know, maybe in a similar situation where they've been contemplating going back to school. And, um, and the fact that you're doing it while you're running the nonprofit that you founded is just really, really great. So um, thank you for your time. Let, let's, I'll be good steward of your time this morning. And um, we'll dive right in. So at the very beginning, I would have given like a little intro teaser to who you are and what your organization does. But um, just to kind of kick us off here, um, why don't you tell us a little bit about what Loving Bottoms does? We are a diaper bank, uh, which a lot of people are like, what is that? Uh, and I try to tell people, because most people can relate to what a food bank is. Um, everybody kind of knows what that is. And their whole purpose is to collectively get the, the extra food um, that's available in an area together and uh, get it out to all the little pantries in the different communities uh, so that it can reach the people that need it. Uh, we do the same thing, but with diapers. Um, so we my whole world revolves around uh, getting as many diapers as humanly possible and then getting them out to all of the good people doing the good work um, in our region um, so that they can get them to families. Um, oh, and of course, okay. now we do more, but yeah. Yeah, so you're not actually delivering them to people's houses. You're delivering them to maybe like like a food bank or, or somewhere yeah. that that the people who need it know to go there. Yeah, we don't do yeah. direct distribution. So we would be, we're modeled kind of after food banks. Um, yeah. And that okay. we're not direct distribution. Unless you catch me on a good day with a good story. <laughs> when you have a um, trunk full. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm, you know, I'm not going to say that I haven't given direct diapers directly to the yeah. families. Um, and yeah. of course, last year we did, we did drive through distributions during shelter. Oh, place, but, wow. Um, yeah. Wow. So I, we're definitely going to talk more about Loving Bottoms and its evolution. Um, but before we get to that, um, I was wondering, so you're the founder and executive director, and um, I was just kind of curious how you found your way into the nonprofit sector and, you know, kind of what compelled you to start Loving Bottoms. Uh, I like to say that the nonprofit sector found me. Uh, I was not out looking for it. <laughs> it happened to me. Uh, back in 2004, uh, so many, many moons ago, I, I was living in Kentucky. My family, I'm originally from Illinois. Uh, I was married. I had three kids and my world kind of got flipped upside down, topsy-turvy. Uh, my marriage ended and I went pretty much overnight from stay-at-home mom to single mom with three kids. Uh, my youngest was, you know, six months old. And the reality of, I need to find a job. Um, I very quickly found that I needed to find a new place to live. Everything, all these different things. And I'm going from place to place and trying to find things. The landlord is saying, let's try to get you on HUD and they're saying we need you to apply for food stamps and they're saying we need you to go to child support and they're everybody's just sending me to different places I'm doing it with three kiddos in tow and you know at night I'm kind of after the kids are in bed breaking down because I'm like emotionally exhausted from going in places and saying I need help and uh, doing it in front of my three kids basically uh, without family support because, you know, and you can't Venmo people in 2004. Wow. Uh, right, and you don't right. want to say I'm, right. this is falling apart. Um, and, you know, you get to a point where there's, you've got some things and, you know, we got into housing and we got food stamps, but there's things that if you do not have cash, you cannot get. And you cannot get diapers if you don't have cash. 
um, you can't get laundry soap, dish soap, toilet paper, um, period supplies. You cannot get these things if you do not have cash. Um, and these are things that I needed. Um, and so I did what people say, go to, go to your local food pantry. And I walked into those places and said, I'm looking for diapers. And I felt like an alien because they were like, we don't have those. And I thought, wow, if they don't have them, I must be the only person coming in asking for them. So it's not a problem anybody else has. It's a me problem. That's how I interpreted that. That's how I internalized it, um, that it wasn't a problem anybody else experienced just mm. um, which is not that's hard. Right. That's and that's, hard. it's totally not true, but that's kind of where you were at that point. Yeah. 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 Wow. Um, so thankfully, you know, you life goes on and you figure things out and you get scrappy. I mean, at, uh, at the worst part, I did have kind of an adoptive grandpa, um, to my kids down there. Of course he didn't have very much, but he was just a really great supportive person. Um, I did not have much of any value, but he did go and pawn my wedding ring for me um, to get some cash. That was kind of at the lowest, you know, point was, you know, you've got to have things. And this is something that I have that can help me get some things. Um, but we get back on our feet and uh, we won uh, one year I went and it was 2000, I guess, 2000. 13 uh, went to a camp with my son and uh, it was like a mission camp and we were in Springfield, Illinois. And I was at like a domestic violence, uh, sort of like a shelter, but this was actually like an apartment building that they could live in. So it was kind of a transitional housing and they had apartments there. And they said, we need you to clean out this shed. And I was a group, you know, leader with a group of teenagers and so we need to clean this out and reorganize it and everything. And I said, okay, so what do you do with this? So I can explain it to, you know, the youth, what, what this is all about. And they said, so everything in this, um, the, the people here, they're going to get um, points. And so, you know, if their apartment stays nice, you know, they don't have to be like spotless. Nobody's checking with a white glove or anything, but if it just stays tidy. Um, if they come to, you know, group counseling, if they are in, going to school or going to work, basically, if they're just doing things to help get their life kind of back on track, um, then they kind of get points and they come in here and get things. And I was like, oh, okay, that's cool. They open up the doors and it is just full of diapers and wipes and toilet paper and laundry soap and dish soap and period supplies. And, oh, wow. Oh, and those poor teenagers, they just, they didn't know because the next thing they've got right. is their counselor or their leader right. is just like crying like a baby uh, um, yeah. because the reality of what that would have meant um, yeah. had I had access to that kind of support. Yeah. Um, it would have been everything. Um, but at that moment, I was like, well, I don't have an apartment building. Like, I can't do something like that for somebody. Um, so it kind of just went to the back of my mind. Like, I, right. you know, because all I could see at that right. point was I'd have to have an apartment building. And <laughs> right, right. Um, and uh, about a year later, I read an article online about um, somebody someplace else in the country uh, starting a diaper bank and she had started it out of her home. Um, and so I picked up the phone and I apologized to all the agencies here in my area. I started making phone calls, pretending to be a mom who needed diapers and uh, found out that I was not going to be able to get diapers into my community. And if I was lucky enough, they would maybe give me 10. So I'd maybe get through a day. Uh, and they wow. were going to have them in sizes I needed. Wow. And uh, I said, we're going to have a diaper drive. Uh, and a year later, we incorporated and did the, the things they tell you not to do. We did the, the best <laughs> friend and the mom board of directors. And, oh, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> and all of the stuff. And, uh, and we were off and running. And that was almost six years ago. And um, 
I didn't know a lot of things uh, and I've learned a lot of things, but it has been amazing. And, you know, we thought it was going to be something to serve, you know, my town here in, you know, West Central Illinois, and it has grown. We, we've got nine counties now that we serve. Oh, my goodness. Um, wow. Congratulations. Region. That's yeah. So wow. we went from like, let's just do our little county here um, to let's do the county next door. And, and then it was another county. And now it's now it's nine. <laughs> um, wow. Yeah. So this is it's just I just love hearing the story. I mean, I can't, I can just imagine um, opening up that shed, you know, this is, and just for, for the sake of timing, it is about nine years later where you open up that shed and see the diapers and go, uh, you know, it looked like gold yeah. and to, to have, but that vision, I mean, that was your, that was, that was growing, you know, like if, if the seed was planted when you were in need, it was watered and fertilized when you opened that and saw the shed, you know, and then the sun shining on it when you read the article. And so all of this, then you were like, okay, let's do this. And yeah. you did, and now it's grown. And um, so you founded the organization six years ago now, and you're in nine counties. And are you still only doing diapers or have you, has, has that part also evolved? It has changed too. Um, so a lot of things, we, we started in my house. Now we're in a 5,000 square foot warehouse. So that's nice. We've got a loading dock. Um, in 2018, we added uh, period supplies to our program. Uh, so that was, that was a really big deal. And actually, while we're recording this, so maybe not when it um, actually airs, but uh, while we're recording this, it's actually Period Poverty Awareness Week. Uh, but in my world, every day is Period Poverty Awareness Day, kind of. Uh, we do period supplies because it is a real need. And uh, we know that if these, if, if, if mom out there is experiencing having a hard time buying period or diapers, she's probably having a hard time buying period supplies also. And as a mom, I'm going to prioritize my kids before I'm going to prioritize myself a lot of times, um, especially when it comes to a basic need item like that. Um, but really, we want to make sure that everybody that menstruates anybody who has a period has access to these supplies. Uh, you don't go into bathrooms and expect there to be no toilet paper. Um, so why would we not have access to something right. like this? Right. Um, and so we just want to make sure everybody has access to it because two in five, two out of five people have not been able to afford this in the past year. Um, mm -hmm. And that's up about 35% from 2018 when we started our wow. program. Um, mm -hmm. And then in addition to that, we do adult incontinence products. Um, and that's really kind of a, it's our smallest program, but our biggest growing as far as percentage wise, fastest growing, because it's kind of a niche program um, here in Illinois, maybe not in other states. Um, but if you receive um, Medicare and have Medicaid as a secondary, you can actually have them sent directly to your house. Um, so maybe in other states, but I can't say for sure. So we're really looking for the people that are falling through the cracks there. Um, so maybe their assets don't qualify them yet for Medicaid, um, but their income is where they would need to maybe have some assistance. Um, we wanna make sure our seniors aren't staying at home because they're afraid to go out because of an accident. Um, we want them to stay active and volunteering yeah. and going to church and they've got so much to give to us so much yeah. knowledge and wisdom and things they can teach us and ways they can enrich our lives. Um, we want them to be able to do that to the fullest. We want everybody to live their lives as full as possible. And we don't want anybody, whether it's a diaper 
or a pattern of tampon or an incontinence product to not be able to live fully. Yeah, I I just find myself sitting here. Um, okay, fine. I'm going to mention Brene Brown. I kind of joke that, you know, I try and mention her in every episode. I mean, I kind of do and I kind of don't. What I'm thinking about with you is that um, in her book, she talks about the difference between people who are wholehearted and people who aren't. Basically, she defines wholehearted like she had a file. Um, and this, this goes back to, I think she talks about this in Daring Greatly, um, or no, it was the Gifts of Imperfection. And she talks about people who go through really traumatizing experiences. And there are people who come out kind of bitter and shut down. And that's how they go through life. And then there are other people who go through traumatic experiences and still like they come out of it. They're more like the word resilient comes to mind, but like it's, and, and the characteristics that these people had, the ones that were more resilient and like that are, were wholehearted. And that's what I hear coming through you. Like you, you went through hell and instead of it making you this bitter person who's going around being negative and complaining all the time, you found a way to continue giving back. I mean, the fact that nine years later, you're with your teenage son and, or, you know, at a camp and you guys are cleaning out a domestic violence, you know, shelters shed, um, that's evidence that you were still giving back. Like you have this heart. And this is, this is why, you know, we talk a lot of times about founder syndrome, but that's like, that's, that's kind of not, maybe it's not as common. I mean, it's like when you have a car and, and the car has a problem and it's, and it's obvious what the problem is, then every, you can diagnose that problem and fix it. That's what founder syndrome is. But most founders are not like that. Um, what, what you've done is you saw a need um, through your own experience and then decided to, to take action and fill the gap and give back. And it's like you're living this wholehearted, authentic life. Like you're here sharing on this podcast. This is what I went through. This is what I'm doing. And you know, we're just, we just want people to be able to live a comfortable life. And it's, it's because of people like you that our world is a better place because without you, you know, you think about the people in those nine counties, not being able to get what they need. It's just, um, you really, you really do an amazing work. And I want to thank you for that. And I want to honor that. And the fact that you're, you're doing all of it with just a little bit you know, like you went to high school and then you kind of um, went down the mom track, and got your mom, got your school of hard knocks learning in um, and you're doing this nonprofit. Um, it's really, really great. And I wonder what it was like for you, um, like as you got started with the nonprofit where you, you mentioned doing the mom and the best friend board and um, what was it like kind of you know, taking charge at that moment and saying, I'm going to do this. We're going to have a diaper bank, like getting it off the ground. How, how did that go for you? Uh, there, it has been, I tell people a lot of times I, for one have grown as much as the diaper bank has grown. Uh, I am, I am not the same person that started this. Uh, and I'm so glad that it, grew at a smaller pace than maybe some diaper banks in bigger cities do. I mean, we're obviously in, in rural America um, out here, but I'm glad that it grew smaller and more organically because it allowed me to grow with it. Uh, like there were things that I didn't know, like the people were going to invite you to come and speak. I, I didn't know that. Um, <laughs> so that caught me off guard the first time they said, we'd like you to come speak about your organization. I was like, uh, what? Like, that's a thing. Um, Cause 
I didn't know. I just wanted to give diapers to people. <laughs> right. I didn't know right. that was part of the, the thing. I thought I was just going to give diapers to people because uh, I was so naive. I was so naive on what I was really getting myself signed up for. Um, so some of that, there was definitely some things that I learned the hard way. <laughs> um, but we had we had a learning curve and and had to really educate some people on what we were doing because it was such a different thing we were going and saying hey we know that you've never heard of me before i was not known in the community and we were saying we're going to bring you something that nobody else has ever said we're going to bring you and we had a hard time getting our first partner agencies uh, because people were like you're you're who and you're going to do what and it actually took us about six months to get our first partner agency the first wow. agency to say we will partner with you. And at that point, I had actually said, okay, maybe we're not supposed to do this with partner agencies because we do do that where we want to put them with other people. And the reason that we do that was because like I mentioned in the beginning is that I had gone to this place and this place and this place with my kids and I never wanted to be another place because I knew how hard that was. And I was like, I don't want to be another place that a that a person has to come just to get one thing. Um, because I know that's hard and that it's it's mentally hard to have to go to all these places. So I just want my stuff to be where people are, can go get multiple things or multiple services. Uh, and so I was like, maybe, maybe I was wrong. Maybe we were supposed to do this directly. So I said, well, okay, we'll do it directly. And we were supposed to have like 60 people show up and six did. And I was like, what the heck am I doing? And so that was the week that I Googled, how do you close a not-for-profit? That was six months in. Oh, um, wow. Because I was like, we're six months in and I can't get anybody to park. Oh, uh, yeah. And, and now I just tried to give them away directly and 60 people were supposed to come and six showed up. Yeah. Um, Wow. I think that I wasn't supposed to do this. I think that I was just thinking I was something special and I was <laughs> like, I thought <laughs> right. that I had an, a good idea and I, and I didn't. And uh, that week I went and checked the PO box and there was a partner agency application in wow. the mailbox. They got diapers the next week. They are still a partner agency with us. Just picked up diapers yesterday. Um, and until last year, um, they were our biggest partner agency. Um, wow. And we expanded into uh, Peoria, Illinois, which is just a larger demographic, bigger town. Um, so now they surpass. But uh, yeah, it and it just, but if I had given up then. So, uh, so it can go down some crazy places for you. Um, but there's a lot of, you know, different things you've got to learn to, um, ride the ups and downs of, of the not-for-profit world. Mm -hmm. Um, if you got to learn to go out and find the different resources, like me finding, um, you guys at the nonprofit leadership lab, I really dug in to, um, find my own education out there. Um, because, you know, I was like, where, where do I go? Um, so you go to the internet, you, you go to Google, you go to YouTube, you go to different places to find experts on different things to learn how to do things. Um, we did a lot of that um, to learn how to piece things together. Um, we didn't have the mentor like diaper bank. Um, but now I, I mentor a diaper bank. Um, really? and it's really neat to get to share resources with them and think, Oh my gosh, wow, this would have saved me so much time. But then to know that we are helping them start something and they don't have to recreate those wheels. Um, it's, it's nice. Uh, yeah, I just, um, gosh, I'm so glad you didn't close. I am too. I think there's a lot of people that are glad. Yeah. And I don't think they realized how close we, I don't, I don't think that I share that very often. How close yeah. we really were. Um, yeah. How but close like you we really just... were to, because it just wasn't happening. Um, and, uh, I really wanted it to be on my time and, everything doesn't happen on 
my time. And there's probably a lesson that I was needing to learn in that waiting. Uh, that's what I think. And I guess I learned it and it <laughs> happened. <laughs> So i um, so six years later, how, how's your board doing? Like, do you still have, we kind of, a lot of times we'll call that the founder board. You know, it's a working board. You've got, you're, you're just pulling in people who know you and who love you and want to support you and will help you get it going. Um, but in time, you know, it's like, oh, this is real. Like this is, this is not going away. We are going to have to keep doing this. Like, so um, how, how, does, how are things going with your board at this point? You know, they're, they're improving and we are, we are still, it's a work in progress. It takes time, I think, to do that. And I don't think that I really got it how important that was for a little bit uh, because I was so focused in the beginning on all of the, the doing stuff. Uh, and of course I was on the board in the beginning and you're just so focused on the doing and the running and, right. and just, we were all working and doing it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, that wasn't, uh, the board aspect of it wasn't as much. And so when I transitioned off of the board, uh, and just became just the executive director, uh, that is when it became, okay, now this is two separate things. And I started to be able to be like, okay, this is the board. This is the executive director. They were two separate entities. And that's when I started to be, okay, we need to really look at board in a different right. light. Right. Um, so that was part way in. So we're still um, early on, on mm -hmm. that side of it, even though we're six years in. Um, yeah. I just want to be honest on that. Yeah, but that's, no, but you're doing it. I mean, that's the thing. A lot of times people don't even have their 501 C threes and they're six years in, you know, they're just still fiscally sponsored. And sometimes people never get off the fiscal sponsorship and, you know, everybody, you just got to do what you got to yeah. do. And so my board is doing a really good job at, uh, now we're focusing on, uh, they've got a board matrix. They are focused on like, what are the, the skills that we're wanting um, to bring where we're looking at like our geographic area because we've shifted from being, you know, here. Uh, we want to make sure that we're representative of our whole area. Um, the geographic area, that we are inclusive, um, you know, that there's diversity on our board, um, and that we're bringing in not just bodies, but that we're bringing in people that, that bring, fill gaps that we have so that, you know, we've got voices at the table that can bring different experiences and different perspectives in, um, so that we're well-rounded. Um, and, I, we keep emphasizing, I've got a great board chair now that is, is helping me emphasize that it's going to be a journey. Um, it's not a sprint to fill these spots um, and that it's going to take us a little bit. And, yeah. uh, but, but we're, we've got a plan and we've got what we're looking say. for. And yeah, um, so, and it's a conversation we're having. And, and that to me is the exciting part of it. Yeah. Um, so believing it's all going to be coming and I'm, I'm yeah. just excited for that part of it, that we're engaged in that, um, which is going to bring it to the next level. I know. Uh, and I think that's the good stuff. It is. And it's, you know, you definitely are a learner and a giver and someone who believes in, you know, self-development you know, personal, professional development for yourself to be the best person you can be to lead your organization. Um, and while you were talking, it reminded me, um, I don't often mention um, resources from the lab in this podcast, but I can't help it um, because Lindsay Hoffman created a masterclass called From Working to governing board from a working board to a governing board or something like that, um, where she literally talks you through like what you need to get in place 
you know, to, to really move from that, from everybody having hands on to more of a governing body, you know, having the co-pilot and, um, and so, you know, for any listeners out there who are um, in that same transition space, you know, the, it, it really is a great resource that we have in, inside the lab. Um, so Leanne, I mean, it's, it's just really exciting to hear everything that you all have going on at Loving Bottoms and how you're just continuing to grow the organization and uh, grow your footprint in the communities. And um, I wonder what you have coming up this year. Like uh, you, you had mentioned during COVID, you were doing drive-through distribution. Um, yeah. 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 So, so are you back at food or like, how are you doing it now? Yeah, so during the actual shelter in place, so uh, this time last year, uh, I would not have had time to do this. Uh, we, during that time, we did three drive through distributions a week in three different counties. Uh, so that was, it was crazy. Then I was seven days a week. We also moved warehouses during that time um, because we were in 1500 square feet and there were, we couldn't even function. There were diapers everywhere. Uh, so we were, it was craziness. We went from 1700 diapers a month to 85,000 diapers a month. Um, it was, it was crazy. It was, it was crazy wow. town. Um, oh my goodness. Yeah. But it was, people needed it. And our partners were scrambling, trying to figure out how do we provide services? We can't let people in the buildings. Um, we can't do home visits. A lot of our partners do home visiting zero to three programs. Um, so if they can't do home visits, what's that going to look like? And we had a lot of people in our communities that had never needed services and weren't in programs that were now furloughed or were laid off. And so we just set up in parking lots and made ourselves available um, to whoever came through. And so we did that um, during shelter in place. And then once our partners, that gave our partners time to figure their, figure their programming out and they did amazing and um, shifted to like porch drop-offs and virtual things. And um, they did such a great job that then we shifted back to our typical type of programming. We are still at double capacity what we were pre-COVID though. Um, so we're still doing a ton more than we were. So my partners definitely shifted very well because because we're doing a whole lot more yeah. Yeah. Um, than we were. Um, so, you know, we're just continuing to do that, continuing to, um, work to reach, uh, reality is we're still just scratching the surface of the, the people that are in need in our area, um, and, uh, working to, you know, find the right partners to reach segments of the area that we're not reaching, um, and reach out to people. We're trying to figure out what, what reaching people looks like. Do we hold in person this year? Do we, do we not? We're, we're grappling with all those things that everybody else is, um, I guess. So uh, trying to figure out what that looks like uh, for the fall. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And like for your organization, do you do, like, do you have an annual fundraiser type thing that you do? Um, or have you had any big, like, do you do a, um, a gala or, um, like a 5k or do you have anything like that set up yet? Or is that still kind of off in the, in the planning? I think that's the, that's sort of the fun part of being a new organization. We haven't totally found our thing yet. And so we're still trying on and finding out what's Loving Bottoms thing. Um, so we have, we have done some fun things. We've had like a rock and roll bingo, which is bingo, but instead of calling numbers, they play fun music clips. But you don't even have to know what the song is. You can just sing along. They're going to tell you the name of it and you can look it on the thing. Oh, that's fun. It's just fun. You get to hear fun music yeah. and sing yeah. little clips and, and then yell bingo and win a prize. Um, so we've, we've done that. We did a 0 0.5 K race, um, which is what? basically, <laughs> basically it's a run around the block. Um, and we put coffee and donuts at the halfway point. 
um, because you know, you got to carb up um, so that you that can one. finish strong. <laughs> I love um, it. That is great. So that was, it was a lot of fun. Um, and we were going to plan one for last year. We were in the planning things and we were like, we're going to do year two of that. Um, but you know, COVID. Uh, so we actually, we have a fundraising meeting tonight, so we'll see what we decide to try to do I this guess. fall. Oh, um, I love it. It's, you know, it's, it's up in the air. Uh, there's a lot of people yeah. that are shifting towards having in-person things this fall. Yeah. We, we're not sure that we're really the gala people. Um, we right. like to do things where we bring people together, have fun, yeah. um, family friendly. I mean, we're, we're diapers and, um, you know, but we I, I just fun. love that 0.5 K run and you have coffee and donuts at the halfway point. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I'd kind of like to, to add it in downtown or something and have a yeah. an adult beverage, but oh, um, that would be fun I, too. I love it. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Oh man, you know, that's, that's the fun of like startup and, you know, like getting, like you said, you know, you're still kind of trying to find your thing and, um, I, I could see yeah. that. Yeah. So we're still trying things on. It's the, yeah. it's the fun of it. We get to, yeah. we get to why get boxed in? And, yeah, exactly. Um, and, uh, we, all we know is that, uh, in our area, there's, there's a lot of auctions. There's a lot of, um, things like that. And so we just, you know, because there is a lot of that, we don't want to step on their toes. We don't want to be another one of what everybody else has. Um, because we don't want to, not that it's a competition, but we don't want to take away from what they're doing. Um, and so we want their auctions, their things to be successful because I love the other not-for-profits in my town. Um, and so I don't want to be doing something that's basically the same, but a different theme of what they're doing. Um, and so I want their thing to be unique and I want ours to be unique so that hopefully we can both be successful in our endeavors because the work that we're all doing is important. Um, yeah, I, I've been, you know, my, I love coming up with creative ideas, but the ideas that I have are not, um, probably what you would want to do because all I can think of right now is like fill the diaper and <laughs> probably not, probably not the best optics. Um, but I, I love just, you know, thinking about different, um, creative, creative ways that you can, you can fundraise. And, um, I will say if any of you have ideas, like shoot them over to Leanne, because, you know, Absolutely. I'm, I, I, that, but I don't know that, that 0.5 K I might be one of my favorite nonprofit or uh, nonprofit fundraisers I've ever heard of. I, because I can do that one. <laughs> I know I was hoping last year and uh, just, you know, spoiler, if we, if, if the committee does decide that we do want to uh, bring it back for this fall, uh, I'm hoping to add a, an extra layer to it, uh, where we would add some obstacles where you might oh. have to jump <laughs> over a straw or something, oh. um, or we might have those really cheap water guns and potentially people that go pew pew and shoot them at you as a water obstacle. Um, you know, to really up it. Oh my gosh. Know, to make it a challenge. I, I, I just, K and put the challenge I love it. I love it. You know, yeah. oh, what did, um, <laughs> well, you know, I'm thinking of, um, Carrie Pepper McKeon's organization. They do a 5k and they do rucking and it's like, you have to carry like a backpack and all that. So I could, oh my goodness. Yeah. You could have so much fun and, and that would be yours. I mean, uniquely yeah. yours. And, and it's, it's not uniquely, I mean, to be fair, I all of this is totally great. from other people, the people <laughs> down. And I think it's uh, someplace in Texas, they did like an amazing, huge one. And it was, uh, went totally viral and was, I love fun. it. So the concept did come from somebody else, uh, but, yeah, but uh, still, we're the only I mean, one in our corner of the world. I was going to say it. it, but it's so fun and creative and yeah. you could just, oh my gosh, I would love that. So, yeah. um, so Leanne, like how do people, 
keep in touch with you? Um, uh, how do they get in touch with you? And like if, if they wanted to send in a donation or maybe even partner with you um, in, in central Illinois, how do they do that? Yeah, so they can find us at, on the internet, lovingbottoms.org. Uh, on social, we are at Loving Bottoms. You just search for us that way on everything. Um, and then you can find me personally. You can just email Leanne. L-E-E-A-N-N at lovingbottoms.org. Um, you can hit me up. I am, I am open everywhere. I'm pretty easy to okay. find. All right. Thank you. And I have an idea for your fundraiser. If you guys decide not to go in person, um, do your virtual 0.5K. Yeah, we, we might do that. Around the living room. <laughs> We thought about it last year. If we hadn't, if we last year, I did um, up until last August, uh, I was the only, I did all, all the things. Um, and so we did bring somebody on last August um, at a part-time 15 hours a week. And uh, I finally got a helper. <laughs> um, I did not have the capacity last year to have tried with our just with our distribution, everything going. Um, and so I had hoped that maybe last year I would be able to pull that off, but I realized that I did have limits. Um, and uh, so it didn't happen last year, but it might happen this year. We'll see. We'll see. I've got good people going to help oh, us brainstorm. Yeah. Well, you know, if you do end up doing something virtually, make sure and let, let me know because um, I, I would, I would be participating in that you know, it was fun. Uh, if nothing else, just for the bumper sticker, because we had little 0.5 K stickers. Oh. And I did that just because my brother has like the Iron Man and he's got like a 50 K sticker. And uh -huh. I just wanted a sticker too, because I don't have like the, the marathon sticker and the 50 K. I, I, I want one. I know. I, I love it. The, oh, Leanne. I just wanted the 0.5 K. You're, sticker. you're, Sorry. Sorry, speaking my language, girl. I'm just saying, I love it. I love it so, so much. Um, you know, a, a 5k for a 0.5k for the rest of us. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, well, Leanne, um, it, nobody will ever know how much, um, how many obstacles we overcame to record this podcast, uh, oh, wow. but we did it. And I'm so grateful for your time this morning. I wish you just the very best of um, uh, that, that you will remember everything that you learned um, for your final um, that you're going to be taking in about 40 minutes. And um, thank you so much for carving out this time and just sharing such just, I'm, I just am walking away from this with a huge smile on my face, knowing that um, you are making such a huge difference in the world. Thank you for sticking with it, for not giving up and for continuing to just grow and have the vision and the passion for, uh, for helping people in your community. Thank you so much for that. Thank you. I just, wow. You, I'm a words of affirmation girl. You just made me feel good. Oh. Um, so I appreciate, <laughs> I appreciate that. I appreciate you and, um, just this podcast and the space that you, you give people to share their stories and us to be able to hear other people's stories and learn from each other. Yeah. Um, it's, it's so important and it yeah. brings everybody together and we can all learn from each other. Yeah. And I mean, that's I it. it. That's what it's all about. So, um, well, thank you again and I will see you in the village. Thank you. Thanks for listening. To access the show notes or share feedback on this podcast and link over to our socials, visit our website at yournonprofitlife.com. That's yournonprofitlife.com. And hey, if you've enjoyed listening to this podcast, you're going to love The Village. It's our exclusive online community where we take what we're learning in the Nonprofit Leadership Lab and apply it. We take it to the next level with live Q&As, boot camps, online book clubs, and legit support from experts committed to helping you extend your nonprofit life. By the way, 
Since we're just getting started, it would mean the world to us if you'd subscribe to the podcast and leave a great review on iTunes. The reviews will help us get the podcast in front of more people as we try to take the whole sector from messy to thriving. See you next time.